What are you seeing from the offensive line? This is a hot topic. Yeah. So, I mean, we talk about the offensive line. I don't know how, if you're optimistic or pessimistic about it. I personally am a little more optimistic, although the point is there's just, it's too early to tell for me. Um, when you talk about the offensive line, they've had a couple of good days. First week was not great, uh, obviously. No pads. No pads. No pads. No pads. Okay. And Throw yesterday was a no padded day. To yeah. me, I'm not and necessarily. Two days in pads. Yeah. 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 To yeah. me, it's not that I'm worried as much about the offensive line, but the, uh, like, there are a couple of things that I've been stressing. First of all, the point is cohesion. The 49ers continuously swap their centers, Jake Brendel and Daniel Brunskill. Brunskill had a great practice on Tuesday. I thought he was the best, the better center by far on Tuesday mm-hmm. with uh, a number of run blocks and pass protection as well. And then they went to Jake Brendel on Wednesday. I thought Brunskill, who had taken a majority of the snaps on Tuesday, would be the center after that um, because uh, obviously he hadn't, uh, he was, it, that was the first day he started. And he hadn't necessarily started before, even though he got a majority of the reps on Saturday. And then they went to Bre- uh, Brendel again. So to me, the, the point that I've been talking about on the offensive line, specifically at center, the guards, they are rookies, uh, at least in terms of playing time. Right. Not only are they trying to get acclimated to the tackles who are ch- interchanging because McGlinchey and Williams have been limited at times. They have they have to get, uh, like, especially in the zone read uh, offense where it's a bunch of rushing into the interior, you have to get acclimated to the center as well. And when it's continuously changing, when both of them have different tendencies, both in pass protection and run blocking, it's hard to develop uh, some sustainability. And, like, it's hard to really see what this offensive line could be. But in the short time that I've seen him, I've seen a couple of good runs. That was on Tuesday. You saw uh, the running game finally explode, not only on the outside, but also on the inside for five, six yard gains. The uh, the protection also seemed like it was the best by far on Tuesday. And that was without Mike McGlinchey there, who, in my opinion, has had a fine camp to start. Mm, okay. Um, interesting. Uh, so what I've noticed is that they want Brendel to have that job, I think. Talking to Chris Forster today. He's really hyping up Brendel. He's like, I mean, he knows the odds. He's so smart. And I mean, he, he like his athletic testing, he compared him to Creed Humphreys, Ryan. He's like, I'm not saying he's Creed Humphreys or anything, but I mean, you compare him. It's like, so, and then he's like, and then you have Daniel Brunskill, who really isn't off the charts, but he finds ways to get people blocked. I think they want Daniel Brunskill to be there, like do everything backup. Correct. I don't know yeah. if that's going to end up being what that happens, but I don't know that they have a starting center. I think they're wondering too. I, I think they like. Oh, real quick, ahead. oh, my bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. But right. um, real quick, I was actually you talking about Brendel might be uh, might be the backup on the team. They carried eight offensive linemen last year. I was actually talking about this just an hour ago. An interesting thing that they might do. We'll get to the position in a minute. They might only carry two tight ends on this roster. Have Kyle Yuschek potentially be that third tight end and carry an extra offensive lineman because they didn't carry a center last year. Brendel was on the practice squad, although he was elevated every game. They might carry Brendel as that Mm. guy because there's no backup center on this team right now that's at least somewhat NFL caliber. I forgot that. So he was not on the team, but he was on the team. He was practice squad, elevated every game. That's how they handled backup center last year. Yeah. They did it again this year. Again, I'm not sure they have a center on this team. Okay, so hold on. Burford looks good. To me, I thought he was – he won reps. He wasn't going against starters, but in the one-on-ones, he looked good. Banks struggled. He went up against Alex Barrett and got punked a little bit uh, by a vet, at least from what I saw. He got put him on skates. That was just one day, though. What have you seen from Banks in the 11 on 11s? Yeah, I mean, when you talk about Banks, it's very interesting, at least. when you, 11 on 11s, in my opinion, at least, has been a different story than the one on ones. In the one on ones, he struggled to anchor. I don't know if you've seen that or not. He struggled to anchor. And what do I mean by that? He struggled to hold up against a power rush, no matter the player that's opposite of him. He gets pushed back a lot. And unlike Daniel Brunskill, who sometimes struggles in the initial part, but anchors up and holds two yards back um, after, uh, like, holds up two yards after, Banks has sometimes struggled uh, in that case. I know you saw, uh, talked about the Alex Barrett rep, but in the 11 on 11s, he's honestly looked pretty good uh, okay. because he's been going up against certain players. There was one day in my in, in my opinion where he looked pretty bad. That was a day where he continuously just got beat by Kevin Givens. I think there were three pressures by Givens on the day. A That's sack a and a half matchup for day. Banks because again, Givens is low to the ground. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, I mean, it's a good challenge, right? And then when you talk about uh, but th- when you talk about the rest of the days, I thought Banks has looked fine. 
I honestly uh, thought he was solid in the run game. And you don't necessarily always see it. But when you see the left side and the running lanes open up, especially towards the interior, it's a nice sight. And I think Burford, it's it's like both have been inconsistent. I think they've had good days. They've also had days where they've been beaten before. Burford had his best day of camp, in my opinion, yesterday in the 11-on-11 session, especially because you saw the run game uh, materialize on the right side a little more. Uh, meaning right side inside zone a little more. But Banks, in my opinion, has been promising. He had a strong start to camp uh, compared to the rest of the linemen, but also the rest of the linemen weren't great. And then he's had up and down days. I think he's inconsistent, but I think he uh, has shown signs for optimism in 11 on 11s. All right, before we move on, I want to talk about McGlinchey for a second. Uh, he's a tough read. He is a solid player. He has weight fluctuation things. Correct. And when he's lighter, he's a better run blocker. Correct. Um, when he's bigger, he's a better pass protector. And it's a trade-off. Last year, he was big, and I thought he was not as good of a run blocker. I thought their running game improved with Compton, who was a who got – I mean, he was atrocious in pass protection, Tom Compton. So I'm just curious, like, where is Mike, Mike McGlinchey on his spectrum of body types? To me, he looks like he's a, on the lighter side. So we haven't seen him in one-on-ones, and I want to see, like, how do you do against power? How do you do against power? That's what I want to see. I think Mike McGlinchey, that's a that's a good observation. He is lighter. He definitely yeah. is lighter than last year, and he talked about it on the, on the live stream, uh, talking about how he wanted to get lighter and how he tried to get heavier, and it ruined uh, – like, it, it kind of led to his injury because mm. of uh, the, the, the regimen that he was doing. I mm. personally think he's looked a little better right now that, because he's lighter. Saturday, really rough practice, right? He was – that was the first day he was in team drills, first day he was in 11-11s, and who does he see right uh, opposite of him? Nick Bosa. Both of yeah. just schooled him on Saturday, right? He got a sack on the play, uh, and then McGlinchey on the next rep just couldn't hold up and held him, uh, just yeah. held him to the ground. And uh, but on what was it on Monday, McGlinchey had a good day. McGlin McGlinchey was paired against Bosa four times, uh, from what I saw, and he only gave up one pressure on the four, and that was just on a good, just a really good move by Bosa. Faked outside, cut inside, and beat him. Uh, but on the other three reps, McGlinchey held up, and that allowed pass protection uh, to be pretty solid on the day. And obviously, McGlinchey wasn't there on Tuesday when the 49ers had a, a pretty nice offensive line. To me, I think McGlinchey is looking better. The one question I have with his shorter, uh, with a smaller frame, is he going to be durable? Because obviously, he's coming off this injury. He's a little lighter. Uh, you you talked about how he might get bull rushed a little more, and that's something that he might have to work on. His footwork seems a little more improved this year, but can he remain durable? Because right now, I don't think the 49ers have a, a right tackle that I'd be at all comfortable with. Maybe Colton McKivitz, because he's looked good at sometimes, but not really for the majority of times. Not Jalen Moore. Not Jalen Moore. Uh, with all these, I actually had high hopes, he, but Jalen Moore is a guard. Guard. Play Jalen Moore a guard. Guard. Play Jalen yeah. Moore a guard. But okay, no. real quick, before we yeah. move on to the next uh, position group, is this going to be a good offensive line, an average offensive line, or a bad offensive line? I'd think average. Okay. I, I think Chris Forster today was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be one of the three. Like, yeah, it definitely will be. What do you think, yeah. average? I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this line ranks around the 15th-ish range. And as, as surprising as it may sound, this line honestly might be the best in the, in, the, in the division, which is very, very funny. But the Rams offensive line. What about Arizona? Is, I don't know. I don't know because it's a little well, older. Hudson's a little older. Hudson's yeah. older. Um, Pugh's older. Pugh is yeah. older. Um, yeah. Like I, I know a lot of people like DJ Humphreys. I'm not as high on DJ Humphreys, and he just got a bag the other day. Uh, and then the other guy is Kelvin Beecham on the right side, who's average. So I, I, yeah. I still think this is better just because we have more top tier talent overall. Um, so making it better, but I think that that's the one competition. It would just be helpful if they could get a center. Okay, moving on. Official BNA Music 88 says after two off seasons with Trey Banana Hands has no excuse to call a game like he did against Arizona if we uh, as if we were at Georgia Tech or Navy. If <laughs> I will riot if so. Yeah, I agree. And um they haven't been calling stuff like that in camp so far, so there's hope.